So what if I told you that some of your greatest struggles, some of the deepest pain that you've experienced in your life, some of those things that you put to the back of your mind and hope to someday forget about, what if those were your greatest gifts? Imagine transforming some of those darker moments into strength, into wisdom to not only help elevate yourself, but also lift others up in the process as well. In today's video, we're going to be exploring how you can transmute that pain into purpose, into something really powerful and meaningful in your life. And by doing so, really allow that to trickle into your relationships, your health, your mindset, your work, your business, whatever it is that you're pursuing in life. Honestly, this process has been one of the most transformative experiences for me personally, and I'm really excited to share with you. So firstly, what we're going to do is we're going to look at some reframing techniques so you can go ahead and start to reframe some of this pain that you are experiencing or have experienced and really transmute that into power for yourself. We're going to share some techniques, personal stories, and then from there, I'm going to show you a mental model, which is called the alchemist's mindset, that you can apply to any scenario to really transmute this pain into purpose and really take back your power in this world. So the first thing we really have to understand is that the way I see it is there's two core purposes that we all have in this world. So we all have the first purpose. So the first purpose is just to evolve as a collective consciousness, to raise our levels of consciousness, to self-improve, to develop ourselves. We have this desire to become more and expand in a variety of different ways. And that is the human experience. And that's something that we all have, right? And then we have number two. So number two is our specific purpose and really what that means for us. And this video is going to help with both of those things. But really, when it comes to discovering your purpose, it's very unique for everybody. So there's no real how-to strategy on how to specifically find your purpose. And I don't necessarily believe in that. It's very unique for everybody, but hopefully this video can give you some direction as to what that may look like for you specifically. So with that being said, the next thing we have to understand is that pain is our greatest teacher. Because if our purpose is to evolve as a humanity and to raise our levels of consciousness, develop ourselves and expand in all of these different areas, create the life that we want, we have to understand the darkness to be able to understand what light is because it comes back to polarity. There's always equal opposites in everything. There's light, there's dark, there's hot, there's cold, there's up, there's down, there's positive, there's negative. To be able to understand what positive is, we have to understand what negative is. Otherwise, everything would be completely neutral and there would be no label attached to it at all. So by understanding this core universal principle, we can now see that pain has to have positive to it. Otherwise, it would go against the universal principles, which is not possible. So with that new understanding, we can see pain as a teacher. It provides us specific lessons that we need to learn to be able to transform different areas of our life depending on the pain that we experience. Because the beautiful thing is that every painful experience has a lesson embedded in it. And once that lesson is learned, it becomes a powerful tool for your life, for relationships, for business, for work, for anything that you work on. It becomes a core part of who you are. But the big problem that happens to so many people is they get stuck in a victim mindset. They think that the world is happening to them and they wonder, why me? I wish this wasn't happening to me. And they get stuck in that type of mind frame, never actually being able to see the lessons that are there right in front of them. And look, I completely get it. Some of the things we've experienced in our lives are extremely painful and they really hurt. And it's not that that is not important and it's not that that is not relevant. It's the fact that when you stay in that pain, you just create more pain in the world because you suppress it into who you are. And it starts to become a shadow aspect of you that you have not accepted. And that will come to the surface in more ways than one, usually in the form of self-sabotage or treating other people a certain way. A lot of the time when we don't accept these things and we get into that victim mentality, we end up hurting others in the process as well as just an expression of our own wounding. And there's no judgment here. We've all been there, but we do have a choice. So how can we start to get an understanding of turning this pain into purpose? So the beautiful thing is the things that you have overcome are something that you can use to help other people. Because the thing is, when you experience something painful, you know what it's like to go through that specific thing. This deepens your levels of compassion and empathy for the person who's going through something similar. You're in a much better place to be able to serve someone to such a high level when you have come from that place yourself overcome it and now helping somebody else do that exact thing not even just that but the pain that we experience usually leads us to research certain things to be able to go and figure things out for ourselves which leads us to developing a deeper knowledge of the area that we're trying to solve a prime example of this is a guy who found himself to be very overweight he went off and he got rejected by women maybe he got bullied by people and this led him to work on himself and lose the weight by going to the gym and going through this massive transformation process. He went seeking answers, found the solutions, and maybe he's going off to help other people now in that same process as well. So if we zoom out from a high level, our pain is really the thing that drives us to create things in the world in the first place. And we feel a deeper sense of fulfillment from it because we are helping somebody in a situation 
that we didn't have the tools or the processes to actually overcome at the time, but now we do. And to be able to help somebody allows us to be able to help ourselves in the process. The reason things like that deeply connect to us in so many different ways is because we are all connected. We are all consciousness experiencing itself through multiple different perspectives at any given time. So the more that we help others, the more that we actually help ourselves in the process as well, which is why we feel this deep sense of fulfillment for helping other people. And this is why I always say that service to others is always the answer to a lot of our problems. So before I share what this diagram means, let me get real and raw with you for a second and share a bit of a personal story. Now for context, it's important to understand for this story, the masculine and feminine dynamic and the energies that are within all of us. The masculine nature is there to guide, lead, and bring a sense of direction and depth to life itself. The feminine nature is more to nurture, bring a flow of love in our lives and a sense of lightness into the world around us. But both energies need each other to work. And the outcome of that working in harmony is the full flow of love and expansion for both people. Now, like I mentioned, both of these energies are within all of us. So yes, you watching this video, you have both masculine and feminine energy. This has nothing to do with male or female. It's simply an energy. So depending on which one you fall into, one of those energies is going to be more dominant in you than the other. But you still have both. Now, let me tie this into the story. I grew up in a household where my father was disconnected from his masculine core. He became very distant from all of us. And for lack of a better term, he became very resentful of the world around. The thing is, as I was growing up, this led me to be raised by my mother the majority of the time. Now, of course, she did the best she could. But at the end of the day, a woman cannot fully be 100% a masculine role model for a man. Now, over time, this led me to feel resentful towards my father, becoming reckless, being consumed by guilt and shame and feelings of unworthiness, feelings of being unloved, and eventually led me to taking a lot of drugs and alcohol. Until it got to a point where I couldn't outrun it anymore. It was staring me directly in the face and I had to go up and I had to face it. Now, this led me to self-development, reading, studying, finding mentors and leaders who could fulfill that masculine role in my life. And thankfully, I found mentors who were coming from a place of love, coming from a place of purpose and direction, rather than a place of ego. Now, along this way, there was a lot of pain. There was a lot of regret. There was a lot of things I did that I wasn't proud of. And that led to a lot of pain building up and it felt suffocating. It felt like I couldn't move for a very long time. But, but the core lesson with all of this is that we always have a choice. We can either face the lessons that are staring us right in the face and move up into the light by overcoming them and choosing to grow from them. Or we can keep suppressing ourselves and keep going down and getting pulled into the darkness. This is where you build up resentment. This is where you build up addictions. This is where you start expressing that pain into the world around you because of your wounding. And this is where there's a lot of pain created in the world. And unfortunately, this is where a lot of people find themselves, where they've suppressed so much of their lives into the darkness that it just comes up in them treating others with disrespect, uh, not being able to feel love fully, not being able to actually give anything to the world and feeling like the whole world is against them constantly. I've seen this, I've witnessed this, I've experienced it to a degree myself as well. And it's a really, really dark place to be. The world gets very gloomy, it gets very gray. And for lack of a better way to express it, it's fucking miserable. So we always have a choice. Continue being a victim or step into the light. Choose to embrace the lessons that are coming with this. And this is not easy. I admire anybody who's gone through that process with some of the hardest things that they've ever faced in their lives. But choosing to stay in the pain creates more pain in the world around us. And unfortunately, this is very, very present in the online space, specifically in the masculinity space as well. There's a lot of boys out there who are hurt and they pretend to be men. They'll make you believe that status, fame and chasing money material objects is the solution to all problems. But this is a one-sided view of the world. A lot of these men will preach masculinity. They'll start telling you about how masculine they are and how masculine you need to be. But if a man keeps telling you how masculine he is, very likely he's struggling with his own masculinism and instead presents all of these different things outside of himself, like money, fame and cars and all these different things as the external solution to internal problems. And hey, there's no judgment here. There's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting material things. But when the core message of becoming a masculine man is chasing money, fame and status, there's something really wrong. And if something feels off, you do have to ask the question, should I really be listening to this person? So the next thing is the power of vulnerability. When you are vulnerable, first of all, with yourself, it allows you to be vulnerable with other people and also help other people going through something similar. And sharing pains and struggles only makes you more relatable. It makes you more trustworthy and it shows others that they're not alone in the things that they're going through. When you're forcing yourself to hold up a front on the outside, but you're really struggling on the inside, eventually it's going to come a time where it's going to break through. It's like water being built up behind a small dam. Eventually it is going to crack. It is going to break through. So that starts with being vulnerable with yourself and sitting with the emotions that you feel based on the things that have happened or you are currently experiencing in your life, not shying away from them, not being afraid of them, but really sitting in it. I have other videos on this, but really the core idea of all of this is to, as simple as it sounds, sit with the emotions that come up for you based on these things that have happened to you, bringing up those old things, 
processing them, reframing them using what we're going to be talking about in this video and allowing yourself to understand that there's always power and purpose in every pain that you experience. And that brings me to the next point, which is understanding polarity, which we briefly touched on. So like we mentioned, everything in the universe is equally balanced at all times. And when we are so focused on being a victim and we're stuck in the pain, we're focused on this side of the polarity. We're not seeing the other side. Our perspective is solely focused on one area of what is actually happening. We don't have a clear view of reality. A clear view of reality is seeing both sides equally and choosing to be neutral in the middle. It is only when we get to a state of neutrality, start to master our minds and emotions and sit in this place. This is where we can really make great decisions based on where we want to move, the direction of our life, and understand that everything in our life is serving us in so many different ways. And really the only truth is that everything is equally balanced at all times. So this means that for us to be able to find the positive aspects of the pain that we've been experiencing, we need to find the lessons. We need to find the positive aspects of what we have experienced. And this requires you going deep within yourself. And don't get me wrong, this can be difficult. And it can take some time to really actually dive into those things that you've been experiencing and really try to find the light within it. But trust me, they're always there. If we come back to the story that I shared with you a couple of moments ago, eventually, as I went through and worked through these things that I experienced from my childhood, I was able to turn that into what I'm currently doing now. And it feels fulfilling. It feels like something I'm very, very excited about building. And it doesn't feel like work to me. And this is simply because I've been able to understand that all of the pain that I've experienced in my life is now my greatest purpose and is fully aligned with where I want to move towards in life. And I've now just applied that to building a business around it. But I was only able to do that by first finding the benefits and learning the lessons, deeply learning the lessons that came from the pain that I experienced. Because if I was still stuck in pain, I would not be able to really truly help anybody go through the process because I hadn't solved it for myself yet. And this is why being on this journey of self-development is so, so important. Because when we start to get into the habit of finding all of the lessons in the things that we perceive to be really negative, that's where we truly take back our power. We release the chains and the anchors that are keeping us from really showing up fully, fully confident, fully clear on where we're going, what we're doing, having full conviction within everything that we do, being able to show up fully as a masculine man in relationships, being able to lead other people, guide other people, and bring a sense of direction to the world around us, coming from a place of love and not ego. When we do this, we tap into a reservoir of energy. And when we remove those chains, blocks, barriers, those anchors, that is where the true power lies. And then when you start to align your thoughts, actions, and behaviors toward this purpose, you can really start to create something great in your life. And we're going to get to how to do that in just a second. But firstly, I want to walk you through what we have on the board right here. So the next universal principle that we have to understand is cause and effect. So for every cause, there's going to be an effect. For every effect, it trickles back into another cause. And it starts a ripple effect like this. Kind of like the waves in the ocean. It's the same thing. It's constantly moving, constantly flowing. And it's always rippling into each other. It's the same when it comes to our energy fields, because when we start to develop ourselves, when we start to expand our energy field, because when we release these chains and barriers and we see the opposite side of the pain that we've been experiencing, we start to balance our perception and find neutrality in that. We start to expand our energy field. There's scientific proof behind this. And when we do that, we start to influence other people in a very positive way as well. So when you really start to work on yourself internally and then heal those parts of yourself that have caused you pain, you indirectly help other people in the process as well. And some of you may even get triggered when I say the word healing, because it may sound like a strange word if you're not used to it, but really what it means is self-development, becoming more of who you truly are, becoming more confident, becoming more clear, having more conviction in what you do and what you say, becoming more focused, and overall just being more in your power. The word healing is really a representation of the work that you're doing on yourself because you are already enough. You are already worthy. You are already infinite love and abundance. But the problem is, is that the perception that we mentioned in the last diagram is solely focused on the negative. And when you don't see the other side, you don't see those other sides of yourself. You see yourself as a victim. And when you see yourself as a victim, you can't get out of that mentality until you start to see the lessons. When you see the lessons, you open up your perspective. Your lens of reality gets much, much clearer. You start to see that you are enough. You are confident. You have all of these things locked up inside of you. And anybody that tells you different is lying to you. So the term healing is really just understanding more of who you truly are. Raising your levels of consciousness. Becoming all of these great things that you know you have locked up inside of you. Because they're already inside of you. 
So if you're unfamiliar with the term healing, hopefully you understand it a little bit better now and it seems less strange. And when you do this work, it creates a ripple effect in the world around you. You inspire others, you can guide others, you can lead others. And this leads to so many opportunities when it comes to creating a business or creating content or building something for yourself that helps other people and you can make a lot of money from it. So there's a lot of benefits that come from this in so many different ways, not to mention the, the healing it does for your actual physical body and then you showing up more powerful in your relationships and being able to truly open your heart to actually fully experience Experience love. And maybe you've noticed this, but being around people who have done an incredible amount of work on themselves are really pleasant to be around. They're usually extremely attractive from an energetic perspective. They usually are living pretty well. They're usually enjoying life and they're really peaceful. There is something that comes from those people because it's the aura, it's the energy around them that when you experience that, you can see that they, this person has done a lot of work on themselves. Really coming from a place of internal power, integrity, respect and success but not success the way the world around us defines success when you're on this journey you start to become magnetic to the things that you want and your energy gets transferred to people in social scenario through your content and other mediums because the thing is we're always giving off a certain type of energy and that type of energy will be dictated by your ability to go within yourself to master your minds to master your emotion and really maintain a high vibration state on a day-to-day -day basis and man i'm telling you strange things will start to happen on this journey, I've experienced random opportunities just showing up on my door. Higher caliber, higher paying clients that come to you without you reaching out to them, meeting people who are more loving, more loyal, and overall just seeing that the work that you're doing on yourself is actually being reflected into the world around you as well. And not coming from an egotistical perspective, but just coming from a place of genuine love. It's really awesome. And it's available to everybody. That's the beautiful thing. So before we jump into the mental models, the one thing that I want to share with you that I want you to internalize is forgiveness. Because... When we forgive ourselves and we forgive the people around us who have caused us this pain, for example, that starts the process of really letting go of this. And from everything we've learned about in this video, and hopefully you can start to see that there's always a positive and a negative to everything. And even the people who have maybe caused some pain in your life and they are fully responsible for that, but you're also responsible for it because you can choose to hold on to it or you can choose to let it go. And that sometimes that may seem easier said than done, but all it takes is really a decision. Because when you understand all of this, you can see that someone causing someone else pain is just an expression of them feeling pain within themselves as well. Which means that when we have this higher perspective, right, we can start to see that anybody who has caused pain in our lives is experiencing pain directly within themselves that maybe they haven't accepted either. And that means that we can actually have compassion for people who are, you know, Ne negatively commenting on things on social media or treating others with disrespect or all of these things and that doesn't justify any of it but we have to understand that people who are putting more pain into the world are experiencing pain within themselves as well and we have to have empathy and compassion and forgive those people for that to be able to move forward from it because when we start to lower ourselves and start to get into this argument of who's right and who's wrong nobody wins nothing is solved there's no progress made. There has, someone has to step up and forgive the other person to be able to move forward because the only way to lead is to lead by example. So if there's anybody in your life that you need to forgive, I would invite you to do it after you watch this video. Decide to do it. Have a conversation if you need to. And then as part of that process as well, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for holding on to it. Forgive yourself for anything that you've experienced in your life that you may feel shame or guilt around. And just know, that all of it was happening the exact way it was meant to happen for you to discover the gifts that you have in the world and bring that to the world in the best way possible. So hopefully that sheds some light around that. I want you to be able to really take away that from this video because it's going to be the most important part to start this journey or continue and accelerate the journey that you're currently on. So this is the mental model that I actually bring clients through as well. And it can be known as the alchemist mindset. What you're doing is you're turning the victimhood, the pain into purpose, into victory. And really, we can look at this from, you know, the phase of experience to pain, to lesson, to purpose, to creation. So that's another way we can look at it. But I'm going to walk you through these four steps here, which are the most vital. So the first stage is really identifying it. So what do we want to work with? What do we need to, to look at? This is really about recognizing and acknowledging the pain in itself and where it comes from. The important thing with this is really not to shy away from it or try to suppress it in any way. It's really about understanding that this is really the raw material that you have to work with. And you can only work with what you have. So it's about really going deep into what is this thing, this challenge, this pain that is causing this? Like, what is it? And then you really start to get clear on what that looks like. The more specific you can be, the better this process will be. The next phase is balancing. So like we talked about, we want to balance our perception of the event that we're experiencing. So right now, if we feel like this challenge is painful, 
the thing that we're facing. We're solely focused on all the negatives that are associated with it. What we want to do is start to identify the hidden lessons, the hidden positives that are there and present at any given time. Now, depending on the thing that you're working with, this can be quite heavy and it can be quite difficult to find those things. But trust me, they're there if you really look for them. So what you can do in this process is to get out a journal, start to write down all the positive things that come from you experiencing this pain and just keep writing, keep writing. Don't stop until you actually feel the breakthrough that comes with that. You start to see the other side of the perspective. This can take some time and it can take a couple of different run-throughs. But the more that you do this, the more you will start to see the other side. Ask yourself, what is the pain teaching you? What insights can you gain from it? And how is it serving you in some way, shape or form, either now or in the future? The next phase is owning it. This is really, really important because anything in our life that we are experiencing, we have caused it in some way, shape or form. And we have to acknowledge the areas where we have caused this. And this can be difficult as well because we can see that, you know, some person has done this thing to me and it's, it looks like it's all their fault from the surface level. But when we start to go deep into this, we can start to take ownership over the fact that there's some element there's something that we've done that has caused this in some way, shape or form. And we want to be radically honest with ourselves here because when we fully take ownership over it, that's when we can move through it. We must own it. If we start blaming the world and we start blaming the people around us, we are never going to be able to get the transformation because we will always stay in victimhood. And as part of owning it, write down 10 to 20 different reasons why you are grateful for this actual experience in the first place. So this is going to allow you to take ownership over it, take responsibility and understand more about how this is serving you in the greater scheme of things. Like I mentioned, you may have to dig deep, but they are there if you really do look for them. The last phase then is transcending it. This is the application of what you have now learned, taking those insights and using it to create something. It could be a piece of content. It could be you discovering your purpose. It could be you using this information to help somebody else who you know is in a similar spot. Anything that you can do to apply the new insight to your daily life is where this is going to be really powerful for you. Also, reflecting on a day-to-day -day basis, sitting with the emotions that are coming with this, getting into a meditative state is something I like to do, and really sitting with any emotions that have come up for me throughout going through this process because when you truly sit with them you integrate them you release the chains like we mentioned and when you do that you can transcend it it's now not holding you you are holding it and you can do whatever you want with it from this place of power remember this is an ongoing process so don't be too hard on yourself you will figure it out even just by going through these different steps from a very simple perspective allows you to take back control of your life, take back your power and really do something great in the world by raising your energy, raising your vibration and having that as a ripple effect into the world around you. The work that you're doing right now is really, really important and I want you to remember that. And then you can start to apply this to any challenge that you face in the future. The last thing I would recommend that you do with any of these things is to document the things that trigger you on a day-to-day -day basis. If there's things that you're feeling, if there's things that are coming up for you that are constant, they start to hold you back. If you can write those down in a notes app or just document them in any way, shape or form, you're bringing greater levels of awareness to them. And when you do that, you start to understand the things that you got to work through. And when you do that, you can then use this process on each one of those things and you won't even recognize yourself after doing these things uh, a couple of different times because anything externally that comes up for you is not going to have control over you. You will always have the level of internal mastery within yourself to be able to handle anything that comes your way. Now, with all that being said, there was a couple of things that we didn't go into massive detail on in this video specifically. So if you want to go deeper on some of these things and really raising your levels of consciousness as a man specifically, I would invite you to watch this video here. I think you'll really enjoy it, especially if you enjoyed this one as well. Thanks for being here and I'll see you in the next video.